This morning, our gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel according to Luke on our road map to Jerusalem begins in chapter 14 with verse 25. Hear the word of God. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, they cannot be my disciples. And anyone who does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will they not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if they have enough money to complete it? For if they lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule them, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the others still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything cannot be my disciple. This is the word of God. Will you pray with me? Our Lord, our God, we know your presence is here this day with us, touching our hearts and our minds and our souls, and we open ourselves up to you, to the word that you have for us today, that we might hear clearly your voice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This probably will not come as a shock to many of you who have had to pick up behind me, but I am a great starter of things, but a terrible finisher. I love creating things. I love setting things up. I am a great dreamer and visionary, but I am terrible at completion, at cleaning up, at finishing strong. I can't tell you how many times I have started the process of cleaning up closets or rooms in my house, started the process of projects in our home, only to lose interest near the end and lose stamina and to let it just kind of peter out and then not get completed. And in fact, Our office is in worse shape now that I started a cleaning project than it was before I started. I love creating art for worship, but I am terrible at putting away the parts that made up that art. I love creating prayer stations and places for reflective worship and tactile worship. And I love setting up the tables for the worshipers to come in and gather around. But I never think about how much time it's going to take to put it all away afterwards. I just want to do without a care or a thought about the cleanup part. Jesus had a few words for me this week regarding follow through through these sometimes feeling abrasive parables that we just read and the seemingly harsh words about discipleship, did Jesus really mean we're supposed to hate our families? Did he really mean that we need to suffer the cross itself for Jesus? How we experience hate and suffering is not actually what Jesus was asking from those who would be his disciples. What we interpret 
as hate in this scripture is actually exaggerated language from Jesus causing his audience to take note that any follower of Jesus who wants to continue on this journey towards discipleship must not have divided loyalties. Remember, Jesus has been on this journey now, and he has had crowds and bigger crowds and bigger crowds following him and experiencing all that Jesus is about. And every once in a while, he'll duck into someone's home for a meal and have a more private lesson with his 12 disciples. But then he comes back out, and there's larger crowds following him. And he wants to make sure that these followers know exactly what they're getting into, that they would not have divided loyalties when it comes to their faith in Christ. So family, being the central unit in any culture back then and even now, he tells them must not take first precedence over faith. That a disciple's loyalty first is to Jesus Christ. When you have lived long enough you know that there is a cost to everything. Even from those offers where you get three months free if you sign up, except for when you sign up, you got to give them your credit card information. And if you don't remember to cancel that subscription after the first three months, guess what? It's not free anymore. Or how about six months interest free, right? Oh, that's a good deal. Unless you don't pay off the balance before the six months is up. Because then not only do you get hit with interest on an ongoing, you get hit with the interest for the first six months that was free to begin with. When we live long enough, we know that there is a cost to everything in life. And Jesus is just trying to be transparent with the crowds and the followers about the cost of discipleship. There is no small print with Jesus. A life of faithful discipleship requires loyalty. It means giving up our self-interests that compete with our central commitment to faith in God through Jesus Christ. Jesus did not want his audience to misunderstand what is at stake if they plan on continuing with him on the journey. The followers need to be willing to pledge their allegiance to Jesus, declare their loyalty, and to be willing to use their resources and their possessions for the good of the kingdom. Remember where we started with this journey? With Jesus turning his face toward Jerusalem. Jesus is headed toward Jerusalem. Jerusalem. A place where prophets die. And he is reminding his followers of the cost of his mission. And to be completely transparent, Jesus uses two parables to illustrate his lesson. It is about becoming a disciple. These parables are about becoming. It's about the process of becoming a disciple. We read these words of Jesus now, and it seems so discouraging, but the truth of discipleship comes with encouragement for the journey, encouragement for the process of becoming. Jesus is encouraging our follow-through. Sure, these crowds who are following Jesus are experiencing the joy 
of the kingdom. They are the witness and perhaps the recipients of healing and restoration. They have been given hope and grace. And they have been released from the bondage of cultural religion into the freedom of faith. But this free gift of grace is not cheap. Jesus is headed to the cross, and it would be unfair and manipulative not to share the cost of discipleship, the cost of becoming. The followers of Christ are encouraged to deliberate over the cost just as a building manager would do in a project, just as a military general would do. And maybe this all still sounds discouraging. Maybe you are like me. Great at starting something, super enthusiastic on the front end, but unable to finish strong. Hating families, suffering, it all seems like too much. And perhaps it sounds also overwhelming because how our faith has been compartmentalized over the years. Faithful believers in our 21st century churches all too often experience the disconnect between what we do on Sunday morning and what happens the rest of the week. There is a disconnect often in our lives about what we are doing here and what is happening in our lives for the rest of the week. When we are invited by our Savior to take up our cross, we are invited not into chronic pain and suffering. The world and the human condition will take care of that. No, instead we are invited to take up our cross. We are invited to have our life shaped by our commitment to our Messiah, not just on Sunday mornings, but in all of our life, in all of our work, in all of our rest, in all of our dreams and our doings, we are invited to have our commitment to Jesus Christ shape who we are every day. I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine God at work in you in everyday matters, in your work and your vocation, in your family activities. I want you to imagine God at work in your chores, in your gardening, in your waking and in your sleeping, God at work while you're in line at Starbucks, when you're in Home Depot or Ralph's or Vaughn's or Wholesome Foods or Trader Joe's or wherever it is that you go shopping, because your everyday efforts are important to God. Each and every day you are partnered with God, doing God's work in the world. Yes, behind the desk and in the laundry room and during carpool and in the break room and on the road and with your customers and meeting clients and fixing the plumbing and making copies and answering the phone and sweeping the floors or being a cog in the assembly, defending the law, healing the sick, teaching children. Whatever your vocation, you have been called and gifted as your partnership with God. 
When Jesus invites us to pick up our cross, he is not referring to some oppressive spiritual trial or suffering on behalf of faith. Our invitation to pick up our cross is our invitation to becoming disciples through the cross. Through the cross is the invitation to offer our time and our talents and our labor to God. Jesus, on his journey, is standing in the midst of a crowd of followers. Followers like us. Who is he? he is encouraging to become disciples. Encouraging to step into that process of becoming disciples who understand that their very lives are at stake and that they are more than just mere followers, but disciples gifted for the work of the kingdom in their very vocation then and now. So this Labor Day, this Labor Day weekend, tomorrow, if you are blessed to have that day off from your labors, on this Labor Day, let us celebrate the very place where we have been called to be disciples of Jesus Christ, the very place where we have been called to be God's partner. Let's have Sunday bleed into Monday, into Tuesday, into the rest of our week. Let's have our daily lives shaped by our commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.